masters, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Today, I'm going to talk about public relations strategies. But the problem, it is in pathway of engaging humor. Give me a break. Be serious. This is a serious topic. I don't joke about serious topics. So, let's be serious. Now, what is public relations strategy? Public relations, first of all, is part of a marketing function. And public relations is a communication process which shapes and manages the public perception, either about your product, or your services, or your brand, in order to cultivate a positive attitude towards you. Now, anybody who works in public relations, whether he's an officer or a manager, have a smile. Smiling must be his signature. Have you ever seen a public relations manager who looks serious? He doesn't engage. Smiling as a public relation must be your signature. Whether you smile if you're sitting behind your desk or you smile if you're holding one monkey or you smile if you're holding even two monkeys. <laughs> and you smile even if you have a real monkey on top of your head, you still smile as a public. Because smiling in public relation is the key to success to any public activity. Now, having said that, let's see what are the process for public relations. The five steps in any public relations strategy. First, you analyze your situation and you take an audit. Two, you have your goals and objectives. Three, you prepare a meticulous action plan, and four, you execute and monitor and control your plan, and five, you evaluate and you adjust as you go along till you reach your goal. That is what we call strategic plan. Now, having said that, you might ask, you talked about stunt, excuse me, your public relations stunt, what's stunt about it, what is it? I can say with full confidence that the hospital, Mohammed Dusi Hospital, is the only and unique hospital in the world till today who put such a public relations stunt and nobody else did. And the story goes like this. The public at large, and the Eastern province in particular, they don't trust hospitals because they know the hospitals are there to make money on the back of the sick people. They prescribe you lots of medicine. You know, you go to a doctor and he will say, oh, I'll give you this medicine for blood pressure. And uh, you use this one, you know, to line up your stomach just in case. And if you feel like vomiting, you know, you take this one. And I'll give you another one before you go to bed, you take that one. Ladies and gentlemen, you go home with a prescription which looks like a short novel of horror. Half a ton of medicine which most probably you won't use. Now, because MDH is not in this category, but this is the perception of the public, so we had to change it. So we used an approach which was unique, where we actually hit five birds with one stone and benefited from it through this particular strategy. So you might say, well, okay, what did you do? What are these five birds? Now, first of all, the event. For two years, Every single first Friday of every month, I have organized what we call a medical camp, a medical mission, check, a free checkup for everybody per nationality. The Indian, the Pakistanis, the Egyptian, the Sudanese, every Friday of first month we had one nationality, we gave them free uh, medical checkup. And we received about 800 to 1,000 every time. Now, who are the five birds? And what are the benefits? One, actually the public are the community, because they started recognizing us as a hospital who cares and a hospital with integrity. The number of patients within two years doubled up. The second group are the ambassadors, because they accepted our invitation, and for the, re the reason, they wanted to make PR for themselves too. Because when they go back, they would like to report they have taken care of their community by giving free medical checkup with the hospital, whatever. The third group are actually the managers of companies executives who came because they want prestige, they want to meet them, the ambassadors. And the fourth bird are the insurance companies who actually want to meet 
the executive of the companies in order to get business out of it. And of course, the media who actually gave us free uh, package. Now, as I say, a picture speaks a thousand words, and I cannot take you through all of them because the time I think it's just three or only one medical camp. In the medical camp, you have a lot of things. We actually have big events. We exchange masks, we cut the ribbon, big ceremony, I greet the, the patients, we deliver speeches, and I even have a tent for children, about 100, 200 children with gates and prizes and breakfast in order to have fun. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, I call it a start. Now, my conclusion is, I would like to ask the young generation, what we call the millennium, millennium I challenge them to take this particular project on this pathway and come here and make a presentation and deliver a speech on how public relations strategy will look like in 30 years from now. Because most probably we did. Big boomers will not be existing, but they will. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing. They will not be in charge. They won't do much because they will take over because the artificial intelligence will be the name of the game. So you might ask me, so well, how, how, what they will do? Well, I'll say you have two options. Either they will be amazed looking at what's happening while these guys take over, and you say, oh my God, how can we let them take over? Or they will continue with their hobby, which is really taking service. And I will look forward to that. And I would like to thank you for listening to my speech. Yes? What? I ask you to type thank you for listening to my speech. I didn't ask you to say vote for my speech. <laughs> I don't know what to do with this guy. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. I'll give you the invitation. Thank you.